I don't care if you want to do all this other sexy stuff. That's fine. You can run your numbers on that and fantasize about all that wonderful good stuff when it's happening. But what happens when it gets ugly? The worst case scenario, long-term rental, that's my choice. You're listening to 5-Hour Real Estate Week, where you'll learn to consistently buy real estate in only five hours a week. So if you're ready to invest in real estate, achieve financial freedom, and own the lifestyle you deserve, even with your job, this is the show for you. Now, here's your host, Mike Butler. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the 5-Hour Real Estate Week podcast. My name's Mike Butler, and today we're on part seven of a nine-part series, Investor Strategies for Success in Today's Rapidly Changing Market. Today's topic, how to foolproof a deal before you buy it. Now, with everything going on in today's real estate market, it's absolutely insane. The Feds last month raised the rate, raised the prime 1%, a full 1%. Tomorrow, they're expected to raise it another three quarters of a percent. And this is crazy insane. So as of today, a home buyer with good credit for a 30-year fixed rate loan, their interest rate's going to be is teetering around 7%, a little bit below, a little bit above. They raise this another three quarters of a point. My gosh, that means they're going to be homeowner rates with good credit now. They're going to see eh, seven and three quarters, teetering around 8% for fixed rate, 30 year loan with good credit. So, what does that mean? That means they can buy less house. And if they want to have just this time last year, they could get three something, three point something, okay? Maybe the high twos. And they could buy a whole lot more house for the same amount of money. So in this rapidly changing market that we've got going on right now, you know, history, real estate cycles repeat themselves. They might not have extreme peaks and valleys like we experienced back in 2008, 9, 10, 11, when we had the foreclosure tsunamis. But guess what? It's coming back. So, for example, we've all heard about the eviction moratorium when COVID hit back in March of uh, 2020, I guess it was. And you couldn't evict people for non-payment of rent. And that eviction moratorium expired on July 31st. Well, let me tell you something else. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but they had a foreclosure moratorium on all federally backed loans. And that too expired July 31st. Okay. Well, we're not going to see an overnight influx of a bunch of foreclosures hitting the market and going to auction. Okay. It takes time to file to get the foreclosure process started because it gets in the court system and blah, 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 blah. Back in the heyday of the last financial tsunami we had here in my hometown, there would be as many as 200 plus houses at auction in my town every two weeks. Right now, there's lucky maybe there's 15 to 20. And guess what? It's creeping up. Now, you might say, well, it's nothing like that before. That's true. That's true. Okay. It's not going to be that severe. But guess what? These kind of things are adding to the inventory. And I want you to be properly prepared so that you can take advantage of the new opportunities that are happening in this rapidly changing market that's going on right now. So here's what's going to happen right now. And this is still true today. We've got too many buyers, not enough houses for sale. And when that happens, when you had those super low interest rates, people could afford to buy more house. And that prompted higher where people would put a house up for sale and they get three or four offers on it above asking price right away. Well, with these interest rates doing what they've done in the last five, six months, oh my gosh, it's toned that down a little bit. We're seeing properties stay on the market just a little bit longer, depending on where you live. I'm trying to give you the 30,000 foot view of the big picture here. Okay. So here's what's happening. People did not stop getting divorced. They did not stop dying. They did not stop getting job relocations. They did not stop downsizing. The kids grow up and they get the big old the Brady Bunch house and they want to move to a patio home with no steps. Health tragedies happen, burnout landlords, everything, okay? Motivated sellers are entering the market, entering the houses for sale inventory every single day. And so when that happens, you're going to see the inventory is going to gradually start to grow 
And then the pool of prospective buyers or potential buyers, that's going to get slower because interest rates are higher. They can't afford as much house. And you fall into this. Now, we're talking about homeowners here with that foreclosure moratorium. Well, guess what? Small business owners have that same problem. They've hocked everything they had, cash in their life savings, everything else. And there's going to be all kinds of opportunities out there. Now, I'm not, I don't want you to be, let's cut their throat while they're down. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. We want to make it win win. Okay. And the true test of a good deal is if you could put your mother in the seller's shoes. And if your mom was in that same pickle, would you bless the deal? And if you could bless that, then good. That's a win 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 deal. And they'll be a walking, talking billboard for you. So, how to foolproof a deal before you buy it. Let's get into that real quick. Okay. So up until now, let me go back one further. Let's go back to when I got started. Okay. When I got started, I bought property because it was a deal. What's the definition of a deal? I had no idea. But as I became a sponge for education and training and boot camps and seminars and coaching, blah, 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 I learned there were three basic, what we call exit strategies when I got started. One was wholesale. One was buy, fix up, and retail it. And number three was to buy and hold and make it a rental property. Well, those were the three that we got started with. And so any property that you make an offer on, you should be able to wholesale it. And guess what? If you can't wholesale it, it ain't a deal. You pay too much, okay? But anyway, so then I would have fixer-uppers, and I would do those. I would fix up and sell to generate chunks of cash to pay for my full-time rehab crew and to help me promote and get my results faster with my rental portfolio. So it's buy and hold. Well, today there's so many more exit strategies. In fact, when I teach, there's seven exit strategies that I teach today. We're not going to get into those. But what I do want to get into is all these sexy things, okay, if you will, sexy things that investors have been spoiled with, especially this whole new generation of investors coming on board that all they have ever experienced is super low fixed rate loans. Oh, and by the way, if an investor can find a super low fixed rate loan for 30 years, as a rule of thumb, my experience has been you're going to pay up to two points higher than what a homeowner would pay. So if homeowner rates are 7% fixed for 30, uh, you can, we're going to see 9% fixed for 30. If you can find a fix for 30. So anyway, so exit strategies, the sexy ones. Here's what people love to do. And I see this everywhere. They want to do short-term rentals. So they'll go buy a house somewhere with the sole exit strategy of if I rent it 50% of the month, only half, rent it 15 days a month, I'm going to make this, 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 and this. All kinds of wonderful return on investment. All kinds of cash flow. So they call them Airbnbs, VRBOs, but they're short-term rentals. Well, let me share with you a trend that is beginning to take hold across cities across America. Did you know the city of San Diego's outlawed short-term rentals? The city of Atlanta, their city council has got that on their docket, so to speak, and they're going to put some kind of restrictions there. So pay attention to what's going on in your town. And with this inflation that we've got going on, I want you to do this. I want you to prepare for the worst, hope for the best. So auction with single family rentals, apartments, commercial, Self-storage is huge. I just saw a story today on that where, man, it's just exploded. RV, marina storage, wobbly box, parks, okay, mobile home parks. Oh, my gosh, 64% increase in selling those things. Yeah, they're cash cows, and they work, but I want you to be safe. And I'm not saying wobbly boxes are bad. I'm not saying self-storage is bad, none of that. I'm just saying those are the things that are sexy exit strategies and things you can do today. So. I want you to get a little cell phone app. If you've got a, a business phone, an Android phone, go to Google Play, and they've got this app called Financial Calculators. Okay, and it is. I wish I wish I could show this to you. Know, yeah, it's all fuzzy, but anyway, get you a fi- financial calculator where you can plug in things. And for example, my monthly payments this, and what's your interest rate, and how many payments, and you can see how much money you can borrow. And that is crazy insane. So anyway. Getting back to this, how to foolproof a deal before you buy it. Worst case scenarios. Well, worst case scenarios is what if you buy a property and you can't sell it? What if you buy a property, your intent was to fix up and sell it and you can't sell it and you can't do rent rent to own or lease option or anything like that. 
and it ends up, and I've had that happen to me. Okay. I ain't perfect. Not by a long shot. And so I've had houses where I wanted to sell them, but they sit there for a month and I get a little anxious and this and that. And somebody wants to rent it. Bingo. It turned into a rental. So worst case scenario on all of these short term rentals and things like that is I want you to do this. This is how you're going to foolproof a deal before you buy it so that you don't create a monster of a mess for yourself. So let's look at this. In a worst case scenario, it turns into a single family rental, long term rental. OK. And so I like to I like to use Fred Flintstone's calculator and, and math because he's only got three fingers. So let's take this single family rental. If it's in your own backyard, go find out what the market value market rent is. You can use rental meter. Go look on other people's property management pages where they're advertising available homes for rent. And you can find out what it rents, what the market rent is. So so just for training purposes, I'm going to use a thousand bucks because it's pretty easy. So if the market rent is a thousand bucks, worst case scenario now, let's pay yourself first. So if you pay yourself first, you don't, I don't want you to think you get the leftovers. I want you to pay yourself first. So let's shoot for 400 bucks. All right. Now you're going to take property taxes, take the annual bill for the property tax divided by 12. That's going to give you how much it's going to cost you per month. Do the same way with your insurance on the property. Take the annual premium divided by 12 and you're going to deduct that from your thousand dollars a month rent if there's any kind of homeowner association or condo dues or anything like that you're going to have to plug that in there and then we get to repairs now repairs can be all over the board if you've got something for example let's say you buy a single family house it's three years old great floor plan energy efficient pertinent everything's new i might put 50 bucks a month on there for that yeah 50 times 12 is 600 bucks now, if I've got an older home, so like if you live in Philadelphia or Baltimore or somewhere where every single home, it seems like it's over 100 years old, well, then you might want to put a little bit more on there. So I've got some properties where I budget and I allow up to $100 a month. That's $1,200 a year. And even though I might do that, yeah, I've got 10, I've got some properties that haven't called in a work order request or repair for a couple of years straight. That's great. That's what you want. So anyway, so we factor in repairs. And so we've got that. And in the math that I did here, so we've got a thousand pay me first four hundred, and uh, so that leaves six hundred bucks, right? And then we got four hundred dollars, and out of that we're going to do the property taxes, insurance, any condo fees, and repairs. And so here's what we got: if you self manage in a town like mine, you self manage it, all those things are going to cost you thirty percent. Okay, thirty percent. Now, if you're going to have a management company manage it for you. It could be as much as another 10%. So that's 40%. So that means when you deduct that, you're going to have 200 bucks left over, 200 bucks at the bottom. Now, what's that 200 bucks mean? Now, listen to me carefully on this. So we started out with a thousand dollar market rent, pay yourself first 400, take off those other things, and that leaves 200 bucks. Now, what we call there, and this is kind of doing the cart before the horse, but I want, I want the horse in front of the cart. That leaves 200 bucks. And as long as your monthly loan payment, the principal and interest combined, does not exceed $200 a month, then you can put $400 a month in your pocket. So if we get into that, watch this. I'm going to get my little time value because I can't memorize this. I go back to my real estate folder and punching this in on my time value of money calculator. And what do we got? 200 bucks. So let's punch in a payment of 200 bucks. Okay. Future value is going to be zero. What's the interest rate? I don't know. Let's say 8%. Okay. 8.0. And say it's for 30 years. That means I can borrow $27,000, $27,250. That ain't much, is it? All right. So what if I wanted, let's do this and do it a little bit differently. Remember the pay you first part? I said 400. Well, let's say that you could live with 200. So let's knock that down. And that leaves $200 more for a debt service. So let's see how much money we can buy for $400 a month. Okay, so $400 a month, we can buy $54,000 at 8% for 30 years. So running your numbers here, think about this. The worst case scenario, worst case scenario is you're going to buy something. You want to do all this other stuff. And let's say it doesn't work out and you end up having that thing as a long-term rental. Well, then... Will it support itself as a long-term rental? And I promise you, I have seen so many investors, when they get super hyped up 
and impulsive on the short-term rental stuff, they pay way more than they should. And that property will not support itself as a long-term rental. Now, you might say, but Mike, you didn't factor in vacancy. You're absolutely right. Here's why. Because on single-family rentals, I don't factor in a vacancy factor because my tenants, my residents, average staying eight-plus years. Some of them I bought back in the 90s still have the same tenant in them. Now, if I'm buying multifamily or apartments or you got a wobbly box or something like that, you better factor in the vacancy factor. And depending on where it's at, Okay, that could be five to 10% if your rents are priced right. So that's what we got there. That's the worst case scenario. Let me tell you something about Randy Hammer. Uh, he's one of our platinum members and he's been investing for 40 years in a little town called Brownsburg, Indiana. It's just a little bit north of Indianapolis. The guy's got well over a hundred rentals. He's been doing this for 40 years up until about three, four months ago. He was doing five to six. Let's call them flips okay i fix up in retail and he was making a killing at that plus adding to his rental portfolio well five six months ago guess what come to a grinding halt he stopped doing that because he didn't want to get caught with his pants down he didn't want to get stuck with six eight twelve ten twelve properties that he wants to retail and he can't sell them so he stopped doing that so now he's focusing on buy and hold Okay, so that's how you're going to foolproof a deal before you buy it. I don't care if you want to do all this other sexy stuff. That's fine. You can run your numbers on that and fiddle and forecast and blah, 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 and fantasize about all that wonderful good stuff when it's happening. What happens when it gets ugly? The worst case scenario, long-term rental, that's my choice. That's what I enjoy. That's what I, that's how I became successful. Buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. Okay, when you sell something, that's gone. No more income. But anyway, so much for that. But anyway, so the worst case scenario, kind of to protect yourself and foolproof a deal before you buy it, run the numbers, making it a long-term rental. And I gave you the formula for that. And I don't want to see anybody go belly up on, on something like this. Let me tell you the three fatal mistakes of investors. Number one is cash flow. You can't measure your cash flow. You're going to go belly up. Number two. You got to have systems. You got to be able to push your button and see your cash flow now, not two months later, not three months later. And then number three, and don't laugh at this, bad advice, especially from poor people. You want to have your neighbor or brother or sister, somebody who knows nothing about real estate investing, tell you what to do and give you advice? No. Learn from the experts, from a proven track record person, right? So if you're getting started in real estate, Please go listen to episodes one through 10. It's a mini course on getting started. Now, I need your help, please. You guys are awesome. You've helped me just catapult this podcast up there. Yeah, I've been a little bit slow here lately. We've got some, uh, we've just got a lot going on, let's just say. But if you like what you're learning here, please click the follow button or subscribe button and share this. Okay. I'm not quite sure how to do all that stuff, but please do that. Spread it to your fellow investors and friends. I'd love that. And grab my number one best selling book. In business book on Amazon. It's called Landlording on Autopilot. You get, wow, the book is awesome. You get a ton of customizable, downloadable free forms plus free investor training videos and sign up for the Pirate Lunch series. That's free investor training webinars I have every Tuesday at 12 noon. You can get that at mikebutler.com. So to your continued success, see you on the next episode. Mike Butler signing off. Glad you joined us for another episode of Five Hour Real Estate Week. The best thing you can do now is put this information to action. To help you get started, Mike created a free resource for you called How to Buy 50 Houses a Year, Even with Your Job. Download it now by going to mikebutler.com forward slash 50 houses. And we'll see you on the next episode.